All right guys, we're about to get back on the road again. So over the past week, Chris, Rachel, and our family have been parked out of the property of Paul and Debbie Lang. They're the owners of a place called the Dog Knowledge, and they do lots of dog training. They, do, they train service dogs, they do a, obedience training, all kinds of stuff. So it's been great to be here, and our purpose for being here was to do a bus conversion for them, for their business, and we finished that and it's time to move on. So we're gonna be leaving here today. We're gonna to be going and meeting with a very dear friend of ours. Two days ago, Debbie gave me a demonstration of what one of her dogs can do. I imported Boss from the Czech Republic when he was just a pup. And he has been trained in protection, search and rescue, cadaver search. Uh, he's been in The Walking Dead, Outcast. Uh, murder by the Numbers, A Haunting, a uh, pretty famous boy. Cinemax paid him $5,000 a day because they couldn't find a dog who could look ferocious but wouldn't really hurt the actors. So what you're seeing here is a demonstration of a very cool dog. Up to now, he's just the nicest dog. You wouldn't hurt a fly, but they're showing what he does for movies. Okay, I'm gonna try this. Same place, Debbie. All right. Well, I'm, I'm already nervous enough right now. If. Yeah. Okay, this is crazy. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ugh. Grab it and stabilize it as much as possible. Yeah, yeah go ahead and let him have it. <laughs> All right. This is Boss, he's actually a very nice dog, wouldn't hurt a fly. He is the one we would trust with any of the kids, babies. Even the pony. So the Good News bus is running and we're gonna head out of here. Yeah. Nice shoes. Watch, watch, watch. This. Watch. 
This used to be a good car It's not. Okay, so we're at Fire Church right now. And this is where we're going to be meeting our friend Dr. Brown. Chris and Rachel are with us. So let's go in. This is a nice building. We're at the wrong place. I see the homeschooling things going right here. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, we How try. It's actually three, though. Five. Or is that six? Do we add one to the. Okay. <laughs> and. I'm nine. Nine? Seven. Seven? I mean, nine. eight. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you just did eight. Twelve. Fourteen. Thirteen. So you get to wear the cool sunglasses? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yes. <laughs> How old are you? Uh, three. Three. Five. Oh, no, six. 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 A little <laughs> off of these years. Here. Okay. Eight. Eight. Wow. All right, come here. You just have to meet a few people, okay? All right. Here, come on. It's great to see you guys. <laughs> Huntsville and that Pioneer Village, that high school that was right there. I was like, I went to that high school. Oh, Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. I was, oh, that I was funny? I was like, this is so crazy that anybody's been in that small town. <laughs> Actually, our kids are really good. It's the adults that you know. <laughs> you <gotta> watch. <laughs> Shane was one of our pioneer grads at BRSM, colleague okay. of Ryan's. His mom and sister helped uh, get our school started there. Matt's my producer, and this used to be my radio office in here. Okay. Squeezed in here. What we've done now is we changed things over so yeah. that... Here, here, can I give you a show? So come on over, here. Hey friends, this is Michael Brown, your voice of moral, cultural, and spiritual revolution. So who's going to be on the radio with me today and be on TV with me today? And the whole world will watch you. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, that. we're used to that. <laughs> yep. Today on the Line of Fire, I have an amazing family featured in good housekeeping with their good news bus. That is true. Yeah. All right, so hang on. And you gotta... we have some special questions today for okay. Dr. Brown. All right. And ready? One, two, three. Okay, I'm ready for the. Should we, we can sit down? We you guys want to sit down? Oh, okay, there, there sit you down. go. All right, so who's going to ask the first question? I will. Okay. Do he animals go to heaven? Well, we don't know for sure. The Bible doesn't tell us because animals don't have a soul the way we do. I mean, they're wonderful and they can be nice and all that. But there will be animals in heaven. In other words, God's made special animals. We don't know the animals in heaven may be able to talk. You know, you might say, you get on the horse to ride. He goes, I don't feel like it. Let's do this. What needs to happen for Jesus to return? Some people think he could just come any second and nothing has to happen first. But I don't think that's what scripture says. So the gospel has to go to every nation. So the people who haven't heard anything about Jesus, there may be like one third of the people on the earth have never even heard his name. So the gospel has to get at least so everyone has an opportunity. That's, that's one thing. Israel's in place. Jerusalem is in Jewish hands. So that's all in place. But it seems that there are other things that still have to happen. And it says in the Bible that for those of us who love him and follow him, that it won't, it won't catch us by surprise. 
because we're it's like in the daytime. The thief comes at night, but for us, we live in the daytime. Okay, I wanted to know, how can God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit be one? Ah, okay. So God's beyond us, so it's not exactly easy for us to understand. Like, for example, we all had a beginning, but God never had a beginning. Yeah. So when people say, well, what was, who made God? Well, it's God always was. So that's, yeah. that's kind of hard for us to understand. But um, as, as human beings, we have different parts. We have like our body, we have our mind, we have our spirit, and yet we're one person. Or if you think of the, the sun, when you look at the physical sun, you don't actually see it. It's too bright to see. You see what shines forth from it. And then the rays of the sun that touch us, and those are invisible. It's kind of the same with, with God. The Father is the origin of everything, but you can't see him. He's too bright. So the Son, Jesus, S-O-N, he shines forth. He makes the Father known, and the Spirit invisibly works among us. So they're just different aspects to who he is, uh, but, but one God. What was your most power experience that you had with God? It's hard to sing on just one. The night I got saved and God put this joy in my heart that was just completely unreal. And that's when I realized how much he loved me and, and what a wretch I was. Like I saw him just washing me from head to toe. Like I'd been playing in the mud and was filthy. And I saw him just wash me from head to toe. That's when my life was totally changed, December 17th, 1971. So it was that joy was so beyond anything I had ever known that it showed me how much God loved me. So that, you know, because that changed everything at the beginning, that might be the most powerful. But, you know, I've encountered God many, many times and just always the most beautiful things are when his, he's so real to me that all I can do is just weep, you know, get on my knees or get on my face and, and, and weep. But I've seen his spirit move through me many times. I've watched his power come down on people dramatically, sometimes in a meeting, just suddenly the Holy Spirit falls and people are weeping over the whole place. And, but, you know, because that first experience changed everything from there 46 years ago, that, that could be the most powerful in that sense. Why does God love our enemies? Even people that are mean and nasty, he loves them to change them. Because that's just, just who he is. In fact, you know, I was once his enemy. One time I was his enemy. Before I believed in him, he sent Jesus to die for me. So that's just who God is. And you know what? When you love your enemies, God can change them too. How did you meet Leonard Ravenhill? I had heard him speak in April of... 83 when he was uh, about, about 76 and it was this incredibly convicting message well, I can't live another day without the fire of God you need the fire of God to pray you need the fire of God to see visions like David in Psalm 80 oh thou that dwellest between the cherubims Lord don't stay there come down here we need God here you can't patch up your prayer life when you get to the judgment seat you can't sacrifice when you get to the judgment seat you can't weep when you get to the judgment seat. It's all between here and there. This period we're in now is a dressing room for eternity. That's all it is. When I wrote Into the American Gospel Enterprise in 89, uh, when I was praying, just starting the book, I asked myself if I could have anyone in the world write the forward to it, who would it be? And I thought Leonard Ravenhill, you know, most carries the message that I want to carry repentance and revival. I had gone down to Kansas City in mm -hmm. the early days of the Kansas City Prophets and just yeah. see what was happening there. And the family I stayed with, their, their pastor was David Ravenhill, who was part of the yeah. fellowship. I said, Dave, I said, son of Leonard? They said, yeah. So I heard David speak, and then I got, uh, I, I got his father's address, and I sent, him, uh, I sent him a copy of the manuscript. And I just said, I met your son David, I had the pleasure of hearing him preach. I wrote this book, I'd be honored to receive your comments and criticisms. And uh, overnighted it, and the next day I come into the office, early in the morning and the secretary says there's a collect call from Ravenhill you know, the day after yeah the day after he would have gotten it and um and he said I got your manuscript he said I, I read it in one sitting he said I never do this and he went on talking he said I'll write the introduction for your book and, oh, great. and wow. then um yeah. so that's what started it so that's we became very close the last five years of his life you have a radio show you've written many books um where can people find yeah best place is the website askdrbrown.org, A-S-K-D-R-Brown.org. So you can connect with me on Facebook there, on Twitter, on Instagram, YouTube, 
Uh, I write three to five new articles a week, uh, put out several videos a week, then our radio show, our TV shows and stuff are all linked there. We've got thousands of hours of free resources for you. Yeah. Julie and I have enjoyed all of the stuff he's put out, so check it out. Subscribe to his channel. All yeah. right. <laughs> good Love to, you, man. Yeah, you too. All right. I'll walk you guys out. <laughs>guys so we're parked for the evening we're in a walmart parking lot hopefully it won't be an experience like our last walmart parking lot experience where we heard gunshots if you haven't seen that video yet just look for it on our channel it's called we heard gunshots but i think this is a pretty safe place here in north carolina very quiet you guys have an excellent evening and we'll see you in the next vlog bye chris and rachel showing up right there can you see them right there on the road together.